Let's calculate the moment of inertia for this toothpick that's suspended between two parallel walls. Let's start by defining coordinate axes where the variable x runs down the length of the middle of the toothpick, the variable y runs upward, and a variable z runs out in the other direction. If we looked at the setup from the side, the toothpick is suspended between the two walls which remain vertical. And from this perspective, the x-axis runs to the right, the y-axis runs vertically, and the z-axis points straight out at you. The reason we might care about the moment of inertia is, is that it governs the displacement of the toothpick. For example, a downward force acting on the toothpick would cause it to displace downward, and the larger the moment of inertia, the less that toothpick will displace. For example, here's the uh, results of a simulation and we could observe in this instance the displacement of the toothpick and if I plot the displacement curve it comes straight out of that wall, comes down uh, there's an inflection point and it goes straight back in to the wall on the right. Two inflection points and then a minimum displacement. The larger the moment of inertia the smaller this displacement will be. Let's look down the length of the toothpick. It's a circular cross-section of course. And let's set up a coordinate axis with the origin right at the centroid of the toothpick. And unfortunately, in many reference manuals, these axes will be labeled X and Y, which is inconsistent with what we usually use for the side view. So I propose that we leave this as the Y axis, remove this as the X axis, and to be consistent with the side view, we'll call that the Z axis with the X axis running out at us. IZ is the second moment of the area about the z-axis. We're bending the toothpick around the z-axis and that's equal to the integral of y squared dA. The units for the moment of inertia you often see inch squared for y squared and dA has units of inch squared as well and that'll be equal to inches to the fourth power or uh, commonly we'll see this as millimeters to the fourth power. To evaluate this integral, this area integral, we need to split it up into two parts, one with a, a y-coordinate axis and one with a z-coordinate axis, but what makes it a little bit challenging is we need to set the limit, limits of integration for both of these integrals. To do that, let's look at the equation for a circle. In this case, it would be z-squared plus y-squared is equal to r-squared, the radius of the toothpick. And we solve for the upper part of the circle. This is y is equal to the square root of r squared minus z squared. And this is equal, the lower part is equal to the negative square root of r squared minus z squared. The limits of integration for z will run from negative r to positive r. And the limits of integration for y will run from negative square root of r squared minus z squared to the positive square root of r squared minus z squared. Let's evaluate this inner integral first, which is equal to one-third times r squared minus z squared to the three-halves minus a negative r squared minus z squared to the three-halves. And when simplified, that's equal to two-thirds times r squared minus z squared to the three-halves. So we're left with this integral, which we integrate from z equals negative r to positive r. This simplifies to two-thirds times three-eighths pi r to the fourth, or that simplifies to what you read from a reference book is one-fourth pi r to the fourth, which is the moment of inertia for a beam with a circular cross-section. And note, because of the symmetry, this equation would be the same regardless of whether we're bending it uh, vertically about the z-axis or horizontally about the y-axis.